Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who oils Brighton's bearings, Craig Charles. I know it's hard to imagine, but some people just aren't going to like robot wars. People who hanker after Ford Mondeos with fake leather interiors. People who wear cardigans. People who use electric blankets in June. For some people, the thought of robots fighting it out in our spectacular high-tech arena has no appeal at all. That's right. I'm talking about you, madam. So I want to take that steaming hot cup of cocoa, put on your tartan slippers, and dust off your favourite Valdunican album, while those of us with a pulse get down some serious robotic carnage. Let's meet tonight's contenders. First, from Eastbourne, Enzyme. Will the 14-year-old boys triumph over their elders with this 24-volt-powered wheelchair motor-driven machine? Its front fork lift can raise 16 stone, originally coming from the elevating backrest from the same wheelchair as did the wheels. Took only 100 pounds to build, took seven months to construct. From Elstead in Surrey, with a top speed of 15 mph, this by far the fastest in the field. Will Phoenix rise?
So I'm Captain Murray Ballard. This was originally a wheelchair, which was in our friend's garden, and we've converted it into a robot. It's got the original motors and air, air tires before, but we actually changed that over, so they're solid now. Three, two, one, activate. Enzyme is a faster bot than Demon at six miles an hour. Again, taking on the Sentinel. Oh my goodness me! What was that? The Sentinel dropped in the path of Enzyme. Good quick burst, but in comes Matilda. And they're almost in the pit, and Matilda senses it, and there's the sparks of celebration from Matilda. And that's enough for Enzyme. The Enzyme team is going to the platform. Murray Ballard, John Ballard, Andrew Wilkins, Angus Duncan. What happened then? We just couldn't take it. You just like we just couldn't see a damn thing. All we saw was sparks, and we just started to panic. We're like, ah! Mind your own language, young man. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think you've done enough to get through to the next round, haven't you? Hope so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. The enzyme team. And they should have done enough. At ten and a half meters to go through. Phoenix next up. Roboteers, stand by. And here she is with David Croft and J.P. Croft. These are the first things we purchased. They're industrial motors. They're 70 amp, 800 watt motors, which play to about one horsepower. And they have 71 worm gearboxes driving these wheels. We have blades here for cutting and bashing. In the back, we've got a huge point, which we can spin this thing around on its axis really quick and go after anything we want to. Three, two, one, activate. A quick and clever robot, it would seem. Almost sniffing out which route to take. Taking on the ramp and the ball and the exploding canisters, but more importantly, Kilolot quite wisely veering away. Now it can spin quickly, they say, but it's caught on the ramp and the ball has come into play as well. Pierce has gone behind the ball. How can he see his robot now? Has to dash back. Oh! What on earth is he doing now? Which way is he going? Oh, he's turning the spike! That's what he was doing to try and ram kill a lot! Is that wise? Oh, no! That's horrendous from kill a lot. Crunch. That's the end of that wheel. Phoenix is still rising. And surviving. Phoenix team, towards the platform. Well, well, lads, you, um, you decided to take Dobster Killer Lot. We did. We thought um, we'd go for it. But uh, the problem was we, we couldn't sell Robo to the ball. I think you've got a problem with one of your wheels. I think there's a robotic arm just cut it off. Oh, that's right. We got stairs. The Phoenix team. No arm done. Are you sure? 8.9 metres for Phoenix. Roboteers, stand by. The mule with Roger Plant. We're on quarter optic links between the electronics and motor controllers. It all runs from a 12 volt battery, does a lot of damage. Compressed air bottle inside, which powers the legs and the forklift. It's all going very successfully so far. Three, two, one, activate. But he spent four months building the mule. There is actually an award in the series for the best engineered robot. And this could be a leading contender. Dummy throws Matilda the wrong way. There go the tusks. At 80 kilograms, the mule is too heavy to flip, it would see. Is it mobile enough to get beyond the spike and then dart beyond the sentinel? Controlling those kicking legs goes beyond the sentinel. Matilda goes the wrong way. Splendid run by the mule. A mule, but a mule with pace. Matilda was scary there, isn't it? I should think so, too. I'm quickly... What's it out of Matilda? The kick the what's it, will you? Yeah. Find yeah. your what's language too, sir. Those legs, those kicky legs. Yeah. How powerful are they then? Well, they can chuck a Land Rover wheel about 20 feet. Wow, no wonder Matilda got out of the way then, yeah. eh? And the port lift will turn her over, no problem. You're through to the next round? Yes. We'll see you there. The mule completing the course and going through, of course. But that means that Phoenix with 8.9 metres could be in trouble. Driving was a bit hairy. It's a bit sensitive, you know. Had too much hay this morning, he's a bit lively. <laughs> Robot ears, stand by. Megahertz with Dave and Tony Lund and Gordon Keeling. 
powered by two 12 volt motors, so at times we can actually go into 24 volts to give it the extra speed and extra power. It's controlled digitally by power relays, switching several different relays to give different movements. The receiver is actually fitted into the monitor itself. Three, two, one, activate. Tony Lunt's greatest ambition in life was to meet Philippa Forrester. Now, how ambitious is megahertz? Lovely to look at, isn't it? And going against the angle grinders. And the ram rip, and squeezed in a suicidal route, it would seem, from megahertz. And it is hurting, but surviving. Now against the mace-shaped pendulum. And beyond that, slow and surely, not down there, surely, the flame pit. Megahertz and the teddy bear surviving. Obviously liking it hot. Kill a lot. To impede and impair the route through. And Matilda just for good measure. But slow and surely, and into the end zone. On the platform, Dave Lund, Tony Lund and Gordon Keeling. Well, well, well. Through to the end zone. Yeah. Yes. We thought we were going to get barbecued and we got away with it. Well, I thought the little mouse was going to be the first one to go, but he got away with it too. Well, we put the mouse on so the robots would keep off it because we thought they were pet friendly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're through to the end zone. Are you confident about the next round? Uh, yes. Very. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Let's hope their confidence is not misplaced. Safely through. Phoenix in trouble. But look what's coming next. Blunderbird. They've even made their own record. Roboteers, stand by. On the grill, stuck against the pyramid. Blunderbird, Blunderbird. But that's not going to happen this time because we've got all new track system, a big bulldozer blade, and. Want the aerial. Three, two, one, activate. Boys from Borden in Hampshire, bordering on the insane. Plunderbird the second. Over the spike. There's the sentinel. With that swing and deadly arm. Steady progress by Plunderbird. You can see the raising blade on the front. <laughs> they might have brought out a record. They didn't record a great distance though, did they? Well, we've heard that the house robots were getting a bit hard and a bit cheesed off with people going down that lane, so we just had to go for a bit of violence, really, and um, unfortunately I drove in the pit before we could actually get them. You just drove straight into the pit. It was like you were scared of the robot. We, we're not scared of the robots. We're going to trash the house robots. Oh. We're, we're not scared of you. We just want some violence. OK. Violence! Thunderbird, all mouth and no trousers. Give them around the floor, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh, great stuff from Thunderbird in the pit. Terrible driving, but through. Will they get their revenge? Phoenix, go out. What a chicken! <laughs> it's quick, I wasn't. It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why do you think they're chickens? Because they go down in the pit straight away. They're the big chuck men, and they're chicken out. Right, let's have it out with them. Here, they're all calling you chickens over there. We're not chickens. We just wanted to get through for the next round. But most of all, we want to have a go at the house robots. Silence! How dare you? We're back and we're going to stay. More violence. Right, just between you and me, did you dive in that pit to avoid the house road? Absolutely not. Oh, look, you're packing. I just yeah. caught you in the middle of it. It's a shame you're out. Next year, maybe. Next time, well done. One robot has abdicated. One will lose his throne in the trials. Now, you may think I'm the king of the castle and you're a dirty rascal. It's childish. And it is. But there's nothing childish about this particular version of King of the Castle. In this particular contest, the surviving robots will try and defend their castle against attack from the house robots. Whoever lasts the least amount of time will be deposed from the contest outright. Now, Dead Metal and Sergeant Bash will be storming the ramparts. Our contenders will be pouring boiling oil over their efforts. Will the kings keep their heads, or will the house robots cut them off and turn them into novelty ashtrays? 
Only time will tell. Let the trials begin. Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Demon first up. Oh, and Dead Metal straight in there. And also the sergeant. The hardened aluminium brain taking some dreadful punishment but surviving the aim to last 30 seconds here. The sergeant winding up perhaps to have a run from the deep. There's Dead Metal being eased forward by Sergeant Bash actually. Oh, burning rubber. In comes the sergeant again. Determined to take Demon out and does so. Well, you went over the edge, but you took Sergeant Bash with you. They got us around the front, that was where it went wrong, and uh, it wouldn't let go. And the two of them just got us over the edge. There's nothing we could do about it. You lasted a fair amount of time, though. You might have done enough. You might have done enough to make it to the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, Damon! I totally agree, Craig. I think that's a good time. 27.47 seconds. Next up, Enzyme. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. 14-year-old boys against Dead Battle. Sergeant Bash. Has that forklift on the front. Could flip Dead Metal or Bash up. Can lift 16 stone. Holding position right at the centre there of the ring. He's the king of the castle. There are the dirty rascals. Sergeant Bash can't gain enough leverage. That's good traction. Well done, boys. That's tremendous stuff. Enzyme surviving the course thanks to those plastic tyres, really. Robot ears, stand by. Here comes the mule. Three, two, one. Activate. Roger Plant has spent three and a half thousand hours under sea in a mini sub in the North Sea oil fields. He wants to stay afloat here. Look at the power of that compressed gas forklift. Against dead metal. More than holding its own. There are the compressed gas legs that can kick out. I think this is a sturdy robot that can go a long way in the wars. The sergeant can do nothing. The smoke flies, the wheels dig in, and the mule survives. The mule! Come on to the platform. Well, well, you certainly gave them a run for the money, didn't you? Yeah, getting used to this. It's quite a powerful robot, though, isn't it? It was uh, pushing, yes. pushing dead metal all the way Yeah, back. yeah, it's giving him a hard time, eh? Well, you've done enough to get through to the arena, haven't you? Yeah. Give a round of applause. <laughs> the bearded well boffin goes through. And in joint first place with Enzyme. Megahertz next up. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. 71.8 kilos. Is this heavy enough to hold on against Sergeant Bash, which makes the first thrust? And Dead Metal there. Dead Metal capturing Megahertz in the pincers. Bashing it. That's, that's not the way to go. Oh, no, that's suicide. That is suicide. You're going, you're going, you've gone. Cease. Just like the bus in the Italian job film, teetering, then going. The house robot's going with it. Megahertz, 22.2 seconds. Plunderberg could put them out. Robotiers, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. And to the tune of their... Dreadful pop records. We'll hear more of that later. Out comes Plunderbird the second. Wedging in underneath Dead Metal. Are they as chicken as everyone's saying they are? Mike Onslow and his team steering away. Doesn't want to get involved with Sergeant Bash or Dead Metal. Now does though. And Dead Metal goes. Well, perhaps they're not all talk. And no trousers. And the Sergeant goes. Well, they've lived up to their proud boast. Done. We've said we've come back, and now we've really come back. How do you think you're going to handle the arena? Uh, cautiously. Oh, not we, so uh, confident now, then? Lots of damage, always lots of damage. We'll wait and see, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause. Yeah. What a performance. We've seen the wobbly aerial. 
We haven't seen too much damage. No dead metal went off the ring, and so too the sergeant. Plunderbird, king of the castle. And megahertz, they're out. How are you feeling after that last scenario? We're feeling vindicated. We, um, Do you know what it means, though? No, we don't know what it means, but it sounds good and it sounds hard. So um, we'll be looking at the canteen menu tonight, and I don't think chicken will be on it. <laughs> It's time for the arena and for our robots to fight it out to the death. They have to obliterate their opponent or at least immobilize him. If there's no clear winner, the judges will look at style, control, aggression and damage. Hey, let the fighting begin. First semi-final, the mule against demon. Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. I love the demon team. Ouch, it says on that hole in the demon's hardened aluminium shell. Early pressure from the mule, early aggression from the mule. The demon steers into trouble. The mule nearly flicking it with the with the forklift. And again coming in on the attack. Steady driving and control though by the demon. Dave Clutterbuck's team have driven well since the early stage of the gauntlet. Look at this. The mule trying to push it into the PPZ. They're feeling horny, horny, horny. But it's the demon surviving. Now edging the mule into that PPZ. I think the mule's actually steered itself in there in the end, which is trouble because the house robots come in for the duel with the mule. The demon is immobilized. I've been told the demon's in trouble too. The mule's under attack. From the house robot, but the demon can't move! Killer Lock comes in to finish it off! The mule surviving, the demon in real trouble. Well, we're going to have to go for a judge's decision. Before we get that decision, let's look at some of the highlights. That the early aggression from the mule. The demon does well, though, to steer away from trouble, then pushes the mule into the PPZ. You'll get points for that. The mule survives, and that's where the demon was immobilized. Well, we have a unanimous decision from the judges. It might be controversial, I'm not sure, but the judges have gone for the mule. Congratulations! Guys, how do you feel about that? Well, I think it's fair. We weren't very aggressive. We had the trouble with the drive, and in fact, it's stopped now. So... Yeah, I thought, I thought you were immobilized. I think that's where the judges went for in the end. Mine stopped dead about the same time. Yeah, but you were much more aggressive before that, weren't you? If you say so, I was watching him, not me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause! And the mule awaits the winners of the second semi-final, Blunderbird 2 against Enzyme. Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. Both teams have been great fun on Robot Wars. Thunderbird 2 underneath Enzai. Can the lads hold on here? Murray Ballard's team. Got to say hello to Oliver Beckley, who's been involved in the team all the way through, but was unavailable to be here for this. The climax of all his work. And that work could go up in flames any moment if Blunderbird 2 and the sergeant can edge Enzai into the pit of fire. Dead metal coming in as well, the sparks fly. There's the camera on Killer Lot. Well, they're wedded in some dreadful dance of doom. The two semi-finalists. The main attack is on Enzyme, spinning away. Thunderbird 2 and Enzyme now to take on Killer Lot. Not for the first time. Thunderbird 2 thinks twice about it. Who's done enough? This goes to the judges. We, we have a judge's decision, and the judges have decided unanimously for Plunderbird 2! Well, it was a fairly even fight, wasn't it, young man? Yeah, they just they just hammered us in the end. We just couldn't compete. They seemed to have a bit more power than you at the end, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they just kept on shunting us into the house robots, and we didn't stand a chance. Give them a round of applause! Well, we gave them a bash. Um, we came in to give them a bashing and basically you've got to be caught to be kind. 
We're cruel, but we're not very kind. Um, but to give them their due, they're a really plucky team, but we just have to do the job. One more fight in the series semi-finals. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, plumb the bed, sir. Give them a round of applause. Okay. Now, is it going to kick? Of course it's going to kick. You know How what? far is it going to kick the Plunderbird team? Off the, off the stage, into the pit, into oblivion. Into orbit? I'll think on that. Will it be the kick of the mule or Plunderbirds are go in the final? Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Magnificent engineering feat the mule. Plunderbird 2 boys have been splendid entertainment. See the name of Enzyme cross out on the side. They've already seen the Enzyme boys off. And immediate aggression on the mule. But Roger Plant spins that three-wheel drive away. Motorized from second-hand lawnmowers. In underneath goes Plunderbird 2. That forklift no good for Roger, went on top of Plunderbird 2, digging in. Out comes the leg to try and flick Plunderbird 2 away. He's doing all he can to survive. The grisly list of victims on the side of Plunderbird 2 into the PPZ. It means that Shunt can come in, the mule gets away. Now comes in for a ram of its own. Very close, this. And the judges have gone for Plunderbird 2! Plunderbird 2, come on to the podium! Well, that was a tougher one than you thought, wasn't it? It was a bit tougher, but we already knew the thing was like a dangerous machine, so a little bit of strategy, as it were, but plenty of violence. We almost got him in the pit, but, um, well, we'll just have to do better next time. You seem to have a lot more power than the Mueller, didn't you? Um, we've got about two tonnes of pulling power. We actually pulled a Range Rover with this thing. And uh, just be afraid, there's a plunder storm coming. Well, hey, you've won your heat. You're through to the series semi-final. How do you think you're going to fare? We're going to do our best to trash everything in our path, of course. Plenty of violence. We've got a bomb waiting for to kill a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. <laughs> We've got more presents than Santa Claus, and the beards are real on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. Well, I kicked him quite a few times, I hope you saw that. You it's wanted like me you to. I didn't see you kick him into the car park, though. He's a bit heavier than the Land Rover wheel. We just had to kick us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, that. we already knew this thing was um, a dangerous machine, so uh, we just went all out. Thank you.